Node.js is a powerful runtime environment for executing JavaScript code outside of a web browser. It brings the JavaScript language to the server side, enabling developers to build scalable, high-performance, and event-driven applications. Node.js allows developers to use JavaScript both on the client side and the server side, providing a unified language and ecosystem. This eliminates the need for context switching and enables code reuse between the front end and back end, resulting in improved productivity and reduced development time. Node.js has a vast and active ecosystem of modules and libraries available through the Node Package Manager, NPM. This rich ecosystem offers ready-to-use tools and packages for various functionalities such as web frameworks, data connectors, authentication, and testing frameworks. Developers can leverage these modules to accelerate development and enhance application functionality. Given all that, Node.js is particularly well-suited for building web applications and APIs, real-time applications requiring instant data updates and bi-directional communication like chat applications and multiplayer games, streaming applications like audio or video processing or real-time analytics, microservices and scalable APIs, single-page applications and Internet of Things deployments. All that sound like a good match for some useful web applications? I thought it would. So let's see how it all works. First off, remember how I'd installed an Apache HTTPD web server on the Linux machine I've been using for those HTML, CSS, and JavaScript demos? My ability to access all those web pages through my browser wouldn't have been possible without that Apache software. Well, for this part of the course, you can forget all about Apache and the var www.html directory hierarchy. That's because Node.js is, among other things, a web server framework. Let me show you what that means. I've installed Node.js and a bunch of dependencies, including the npm package manager on this same Linux machine. Excellent documentation for installing Node on your OS is available from the official website. You can see that both Node and npm are live and waiting for action. Just to have some HTML to work with, I've also copied the LPI web page on my own website. That's the one you can normally find at bootstrap-it.com slash LPI. Visit early, visit often. The index.html file with that code will be the example website we're going to ask Node to serve for us. Note how both that index.html and the server.js files are sitting in my user's home directory, not in the var www.html directory. So whatever happens from here on in, I assure you, it'll have nothing to do with Apache. Let's take a look at the JavaScript we use for our Node server. We begin by loading two necessary modules, HTTP to manage the website hosting and FS to read the HTML files. We then create a server function called server that when called will either read and serve our index.html file generating a 200 success code or, if there's a problem reading the file, generate a 500 error message. The code continues by setting 3000 as the listening port for our application, although technically you could change that to any value you like between 1 and 65,535. Finally, we call the server function using the listen method and specifying the port number, and then writing an entry to console.log. Let's fire up our server and go visit our web page. The npm init command is used to initialize a new Node.js project and create a package.json file. The package.json file serves as the manifest for the project, containing metadata and configuration information about the project, its dependencies, scripts, and other details. You can manually add dependencies to the file or use npm install in a package name to add packages and their versions to the dependency section of the package.json file. Let me show you how that works. I'll create a new directory and move into it. Then I'll run npm init to initialize the directory for my new project. The script will ask me some questions. The, the default values npm suggests for you will include 1.0.0 as a version number and an entry point of index.js. You can also have the option of setting a git repo, keywords, and a choice of user license models. When that's done, 
The script will show you the proposed JSON formatted version of your settings and ask for your approval. The packaged JSON file that was created contains no surprises. Now let's add a couple of NPM modules to the project. I'll start with the MySQL connector module, and then add ExpressJS. Neither takes more than a few seconds. When that's all done, I can see that there's now a new file in town, package-lock.json. Peeking inside, I can see more JSON goodness, and an awful lot of it. What's that all about? The package lock JSON file is automatically generated by NPM when you install dependencies for your project. It serves as a lock file that ensures deterministic and reproducible builds of your project across different environments. It's important to include the package lock JSON file in version control systems like Git so that other developers or deployment environments can reproduce the exact dependency tree and versions used in the project. This ensures consistency and avoids potential conflicts or surprises when working with dependencies. There's also this node modules directory that definitely wasn't there before. This directory was created by NPM as a storage location for all the packages and modules our project relies on. When you install packages using npm install, the downloaded packages are placed here. npm automatically resolves and installs the required dependencies of each package. It creates a hierarchical structure in the node modules directory that reflects the dependency tree of your project.